Good morning guys, it's Dale Walker at Whole Shop Performance Products. It's a Sunday and I'm here with uh, my 2021 MT-09 RIP Jr. Um, I've got the ECU back from Chris Moore, Moore Mafia. Uh, he did a, uh, he's done a couple of these now, but he did a, uh, <coughs> a bike recently with the uh, modified DNA all air box uh, deal. So um, it's not exactly like I've done to my air box with the panel DNA filter, but it should be close. So um, we're going to start with that and uh, we're going to get it on the dyno. And then uh, I'll probably have to, may have to send the ECU back one more time for a touch up with my input with Chris and show him what it's doing. So um, he pulled about 4% fuel out of it or so for my elevation. Uh, just tiny little bit. <clears throat> We're about 4450, 4500 feet here. I've noticed at that elevation though it doesn't change it hardly at all. It's when you're about 5500 feet and above. Um, a lot of my other bikes I came here from California. I was 200 feet above sea level. Super good air by the ocean. My last dyno room. And uh, I've tuned to but I was blue in my face and still my my tune down there was the best for here too. So Anyway, we'll see what happens. Um, I'm going to get the camera. I'll show you the difference now that i got the DNA air filter right next to the stock filter. Uh, let me grab the camera and show you that. And then I'll stick the filter in there and I'll show you how it kind of fits and so on. And then uh, we're going to get this thing reassembled. All right, so here's the DNA filter on the right and the stock filter on the left. I was just going to run a K&N because they're easier to get and a little quicker to get but the K&N even though it's of course going to outflow a stock filter is looks like the same size as this with all that wasted space of the plastic mount here where DNA goes all the way up to the top I think BMC is close to this one too I think that's what they're called but I uh, finally got this one in it was kind of a well goose chase on the shipping happened but I got it so um we're going to get the bike together and uh, I'm going to get it on the dyno and um, next Friday is a, another fun night and then Saturday and Sunday at our local drag ship it's the last weekend test section I'm taking uh, my drag bike Ratsuki. Let me stick the filter in and show you what it looks like in the air box. Okay that's how it goes in the air box. The air box has a notch in it corresponding on the top there. It's pretty self-explanatory. <clears throat> it's a nice fit. It's got a nice foam seal. It slides in nice and snug. Make sure it's fully seated down in there. Okay. And now, instead of the... i got the air box sitting here, lid. Instead of those snorkels, uh, hopefully you watched my previous video of pulling this apart and modifying the air box mods. <clears throat> I'll put a link under the description of this video of, of, of that video, okay? Anyway, these used to stick way down here, clearing the bottom of the air box way down, probably be way down in here, all the way, or down in here, a lot more restrictive. So now they're like that, okay? And uh, just slide it on very gently. I did a test fit. It seems to slide over this foam without peeling it off. Seems to fit real good. So uh, I'm going to get the air box buttoned up, get the ECU back plugged in. And uh, if I want to tell you something during that installation, I might stop. But uh, it's just reverse uh, of my the one that shows the air box mod pulling it all down. So use that one for a reference, putting it back together. Um, if I see something funny, I'll stick it in here. But I want to get this thing on the dyno. Okay. Talk to you in a few. Okay, I got my fan on. It's getting hot. Anyway, just a couple tips. So very carefully start all the screws. Set them all in there. There's enough of a shoulder they won't fall out. Again, I'm going to use my uh, drill driver with the long. Just a number two is fine. Turn the clutch way down to about five or six. So you don't wreck anything. And then you can gently, let's see if I can do this, just a couple of them. Only pulling the throttle trigger about half. 
See? And then what you're going to do, then you're going to go over and by hand with the screwdriver. Just enough it's to watch it seat the top of the air box to the bottom lid and know it's in the groove properly there. Okay, so do all those and then go over them by hand. All right, that's all buttoned up. I forgot to mention we got our 7 8 additional hole on this side. And we also have the 1 inch hole over here added. Everything's buttoned up there. Now we'll go ahead and install your ECU. Get everything plugged in properly. Then the little harness wires go here and here. Here it is back from Chris. Okay. Let's get that buttoned up. Okay, got the ECU plugged back in and installed. Make sure your air temperature sensors back on this little pin here that holds it in place, then you push it underneath and it holds it underneath right here. And the harness is clipped into the little clips on the front of the airbox. <clears throat> okay, now go ahead and reinstall your fuel tank. Reverse order, use the blocks like I showed you, if you have them. And uh, get everything hooked up there and get everything bolted up and then we'll be back. Um, I'll show you some stuff about the ECU at that time. All right, just a couple little tips. Put some painter's tape on the frame where the tank slides down. I already put a tiny little scratch taking it off, so not a bad idea. Put a little on there, you can pull that right off. Okay, and then, just to make it a little easier here, see it's on the block in front now, like I showed you in the other video. It's resting on here tons of room under here. So lay a rag down here and just give the little hoses a little shot of silicone spray in the hose. Make your life a lot easier. And then you're going to clip on the uh, fuel line and push the clip up and snap it. So the hose here and the hose here. And what's nice, you don't really have to mark them because they're kind of self-explanatory. The right one's towards you, the left one's on the nipple in the tank. In that order. So do all that. Let's get the tank bolted on. Okay, I found it best to let the back take the block out and let the back of the tank mount go down on the frame first. Okay? And because uh, you can still just tip it up. Once you get the bolts in here, just lightly snug them. Don't tighten them yet, tighten them yet. Just get them started. Maybe bring them down, then back them off like a half a turn. And then, uh, then you can lift that up, get the block out, and slide it down. But one thing I wanted to mention, and I don't know if I can do this with one by myself. Let me see if I can hang on to my camera mount wand, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, it's hard to see right there, but um, there, now you can see it. Can you see that? Okay, so this right hand. Uh, recovery hose or breather hose off the bottom of the tank, the right hand one towards me, um, you want to put it between the main fuel line. See it right there, back in there? It's in between it. Uh, if it wasn't, when you put the line down, I mean the tank down, the back of the fuel line is going to push up on the back right here and probably pinch that off. You don't want that. So you want it routed like that in between. Okay. The other one is right there and it doesn't really matter. It just touches it. Um, the left hand one. This one though needs to go in between it. Like that. Okay. All right. Tank's back on. Everything's snug down. I'm going to leave these covers off for now. In case there's a weird thing happening or something weird so anyway so let me show you what uh, Chris actually did here so obviously he remapped the fueling uh, the O2 sensor is unplugged like he wants you to do I just did it under the cover here it's still in the header I'd leave it like that looks like it's on the bike and put it right back stock if you're not racing 
And of course, every one of these modifications we've done here are for closed course, off-road use only, going to track days. We all know this. And you've already signed my release form if you've done any of my work. Okay, so the next thing we've done is uh, top speed limiter has been removed. Okay, timing map optimized. Probably bumped a couple degrees in timing, most likely. Fan tip set to 195, which is slightly lower. The rev limiter now is set to 10,650. It's a few hundred RPM, uh, 150 RPM or so, more than stock. Can't remember what stock is, the real, the real number. And then all restrictions removed. So that means the secondary throttle blades, I call them secondary butterflies, are being opened. Um, I think the only, I was talking to them about it, and I think the only, uh, first gear is the only one where uh, I believe they're ramped in because it would either <clears throat> bog if you nailed it super hard with them out. Yeah, I don't know about that, though. Uh, but uh, it's going to do something funny or... It's going to have too much power, and you just won't keep the front end on the ground. So I think he progressively brings those in, but much sooner than stock, then they're fully open, 100%. Then I believe all the other gears are all 100%. So anyway, so now I'm supposed to start the bike up, turn the key on, wait for 10 seconds, approximately. Okay, so let's do that. To go a little further. Da 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 da. da. Okay, got to be 10 seconds. And you're supposed to turn the key back off. Wait for about 10 seconds. I won't let you see that part. Okay, it's been over 10 seconds. Now you're supposed to go ahead and start it up and let it idle. Let it idle for 10 to 15 seconds. Okay, after the, the second, uh, I mean, after your startup again, you wait 10 more seconds, and then it holds in memory what we've uh, accomplished here, and you're ready to ride. So, uh, luckily, the engine light is on because the ECU is unplugged, okay? Um, he says the Yamaha, you have to use the code reader to get rid of the light. Um, not positive about that. Um, I, it does pop the engine light on the dyno because a lot of factors, the front, the ABS, all that stuff. The ABS light comes on, but it goes away. And what I found is I ran it about five miles to town, uh, filled, shut it off, filled it up with gas last time to go to the track, and then I rode it back to the shop here about five miles, 
and blink, the engine light was out. So I think it will clear itself, but mm, who knows for sure till I go ride the thing. So um, right now, what's good, I'll start it one more time, is I've got it on manual mode, right? And when I get on the dyno, I can go ahead and push, um, I can turn everything off and it's on drive, drive mode one. But see, with the engine code on, I might not, the engine light already, I might not be able to change it. So I may have to clear that right now. And I'm not going to go fiddle around and go ride it right now. I'm going to do that after we put it on the dyno. So I'm going to get my little code reader. I bought an adapter cable, and let's see if it uh, clears it like it's supposed to. All right, so this is how you clear the code on a 2021 Plus MT-09 Yamaha. It is not the old 4-pin. It's a 6-pin Euro 5 plug. You have to push firmly on this clip here to get it to unconnect from the cap. It's pretty stiff. I used a little uh, pair of needle nose and then it pulls right out. So here is my adapter cable I bought. I think I bought it on eBay or Amazon. I'll look it up and I'll put the description in the uh, video here. Okay, and then OBD2. This is my little Hyper Tough. They sell these at Walmart. This is where I bought this one. I've had it now for about three years. It works perfect on my cars and all my bikes with the right adapter cable. Very simple like any other one. About 20 bucks, 20, 22 dollars. I just saw one the other day. Anyway, so just plug it in here. And uh, I've got to set the camera down. Hang on just one second. Okay, I got the key on. Got the unit plugged in. Codes found. Wow, 11. Okay, so now we can uh, read codes, erase codes. So we're going to scroll down to erase codes. See right there? And now we're going to push. Are you sure? Yes. So then push enter again. Erase done. Press any key to remove, and the engine light's gone. Everything's cleared. Okay, the engine light's going to come back on on the dyno. But now at least, let me unhook this first. Okay, let me turn off the key. Well, let's let's get out of here first. Press anything. Okay. Okay. All right. Now... Let me unplug this, and then we will start it up. Yeah, so the reason I did this now is because I want to turn off all the traction control and every restriction on the dyno. So now we should be able to start it up, because when the engine light's on, you can't change any mode, nothing. So on the dyno, I can't check the power in all the different modes without clearing the engine light each time. We'll probably do that another time, just for fun because uh, I have to clear it each time. We'll see. But anyway, so now, uh, with the key on, see it's on in the manual mode right now, so I can just push this, hold this top button up, and it should turn it off. Yeah. So now we're going to be able to get it over on the dyno, start it up, and I'll run it like that, and then when the engine light pops on, it should just save those, and so all the runs will be, everything turned off. Everything. And in, and in mode one, the most aggressive. So let's start it up one last time, show you how it sounds. Okay, yeah, again, that's the <clears throat> Black Widow full system with my whole shot 14-inch street muffler on it, okay? 
And I put a little fender eliminator and got rid of the ugly rear, ugly stock thing. It's just one of the ones on eBay. It was built pretty good. They're all made in China, most of them. Fit nice. Only trouble is the blinkers flopped around. So I got a thick O-ring and I put it in between the rubber. This isn't wide enough and they were just drooping and flopping. We'll see how that goes. So anyway, uh, I think that ends this video here. I'm going to make this separate and then we'll get in the dyno room and we will make a new video for dynoing the flash. So if you enjoyed this and it helps you reassemble and disassemble and look at the airbox mods from previous video, please give me a thumbs up and please hit the notification bell so you see my next videos. And um, give me a thumbs up and subscribe and all that good stuff. I really appreciate it. I don't really do videos to make a bunch of money. I do them because I enjoy teaching people and showing how I work and the results in the end. So I'll talk to you later and thanks for watching. We'll get in the dyno room.